coming up with this edition of Able Dead on Air, highlights from the Vermont State House, Vermont Disability Day 2019. All of that coming up next on Able Dead on Air. Ableton on Air is sponsored in part by Green Mountain Support Services, empowering neighbors with disabilities to be at home in the community. Additional support for Ableton on Air is sponsored in part by Washington County Mental Health Services, where hope and support come together. Welcome to this edition of Able Then and Air, the one and only program that focuses on the needs, concerns, and achievements of the differently able. I've always been your host, Lauren Seiler. Our lead is off today. Thank you to our sponsors. On this exciting edition and informative edition of Able Then and Air, we look at highlights from the Vermont Disability Day at the State House 2019. What you're about to see are speeches from Monica Hutt of Dale, who's been on the show before, as well as Governor Phil Scott and others. And also, you're about to listen to a presentation from Nate Bezio, board member and treasurer of the Northeast Disabled Athletic Association. Adaptive Sports and Recreation is his presentation. Let's take a look at highlights from the State House. Let's take a look at this. Um, here with us this morning, and I want to um, thank um, Governor Scott for being here today and invite him up and say a few words. Thank you. Since I, you broke it first. Thank you. It's uh, on the record. Too. It's not good. <laughs> well, good morning, everyone. I just want to take a moment to, uh, to really welcome you to the State House. How many first time, Lewis, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> how many first time uh, to the State House? First time? Anybody else? First time? First time? First time? Well, great. Well, welcome. You should make, make sure that it's not your last time, right? Because it's really important for every, every voice to be heard. And we're very open here. We want to hear from you. And uh, you can go into any committee room uh, and listen to what's going on there, as well as add your voice and see your representatives. And that's what makes Vermont so special. Uh, we're, we're unique, we're tolerant, we're compassionate, and we want to help. So regardless of party, uh, we're here to represent you. So we have some challenges in Vermont. Uh, we, we acknowledge that. We, we have a stagnant population. Uh, we're not growing as fast as I think we should. Uh, we have a lot of open jobs throughout Vermont. We don't have people to fill them. And that's where you come in as well. We want everyone that wants to work, can work, uh, to be independent. We want them to be uh, fulfilled. and We want them to have a job. So we're here to try and make sure that happens because it helps all of us in the long run. It adds to the economy, uh, plus gives you that, that ability to be independent. And uh, my, uh, just a quick story, uh, and some of you have heard it before, but my dad was a World War II vet. Uh, my dad grew up in Washington, Vermont, uh, but was severely injured in, uh, in the invasion after D-Day invasion, and uh, was in a tank explosion, and lost both his legs. Uh, spent two years in Walter Reed Hospital, and came back, um, and, uh, but started a new life back in Vermont, and met my mom. Uh, they met in Lake Elmore, had three boys, and uh, we had somewhat of a normal life. He worked right over. Uh, next door in the uh, in the 133 uh, State Street uh, in uh, in the uh, highway division, and he issued highway uh, oversized load permits because, as I said, he was a truck driver by trade. Uh, he unfortunately died when I was 11 uh, due to those injuries. My mom was a single mom overnight with three boys, uh, so I uh, reflect on that a lot uh, about what it must have been like uh, for him uh, long before ADA and and some of the some of the, uh, the issues that he faced uh, trying to, to get into different places. Um, but as well, uh, my mom, uh, who uh, had all of a sudden was a single parent of uh, three, three re really, uh, uh, you know, we were very active uh, kids. Uh, so, uh, so it put a lot of pressure on her. 
But, uh, but again, I, uh, I just wanted to take a moment to, to thank you again for coming. Uh, my administration uh, is here to help. When I, my first day in office, I issued this executive order for my, my cabinet, my administration. And it was three very simple principles. To grow the economy, make Vermont more affordable, and protect the most vulnerable. And we look at every single issue uh, that we take up and we try and promote, and we ask ourselves, does it, does it accomplish at least one out of three, hopefully two out of three, or three out of three? And I think that, uh, that we, so we have a lot of common interests uh, here, and, uh, and it really is important that you add your voice and be active uh, because we're here to, to serve you. So again, I thank you for coming in. Nice to see you again, Lewis. And uh, we'll see you at Member Road this, uh, this summer. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Again, thank you very much for being here. the last speaker today actually um, but I but I would like in addition to the work that we do here in the legislature today the other the other side of the work that we need to do is within the administration and we're so lucky to have Commissioner Hutt here with us from the Department of Disabilities Aging and Independent Living I'd like to invite her up to say a few words if you'd like <laughs> so in all honesty like it was in the hallway where I told her that I'd like her to come up so and I thought she was joking. Oh, see, yeah, my sarcasm. You don't need to say anything. We'd um, love to hear from you. No, thank you so much. Um, I, am, I am so glad that this room filled up the way that it did. I was a little bit panicked when I first sat down, and I'm so delighted that people got here, regardless of the weather. Um, you know, no matter how we approach these issues, there will always be differences of opinion, there will always be kind of different ways to look at things. But the reality is that the work that we do in Vermont on behalf of individuals with disabilities and in partnership with individuals with disabilities is so important. Um, and I love this day because I love that everybody stands here and blocks the hallways and makes themselves really visible and present and loud, and that's what we really need to do. Because ultimately, that's how we get people to pay attention. And Vermont is unique because you can walk into any office and into any door, into any committee room, and make sure that you say what you want to say. And let's not ever lose that opportunity. Let's not ever walk away from that because it's really important. I'm so glad that the governor was here. I'm so glad that he recognizes that individuals with disabilities are part of the natural resource that we have here in Vermont. I'm headed over to the Capitol Plaza to talk with some employers who really honor and embrace the spirit of the ADA and their hiring practices. We need to make that happen more. I'm so glad that Mary was able to talk a little bit and Deb about the issues facing Vermonters who are deaf and hard of hearing and deaf blind. We have so much work to do, but I love this room and I love this day and I love this energy. So thank you very much, Sarah, for letting me speak and I'm so glad we're all here. Thanks. Thank you, Commissioner. If not, just uh, let me know if I'm speaking loud enough. I've always been told I have a loud, obnoxious voice, so hopefully that will be in my advantage today. Don't and, uh, I won't need a microphone. Um, we are passing handouts for the slides so people can look at them. Uh, we have enlarged versions for if anybody has any vision, dis visual disabilities. Um, but, you know, hopefully you can follow along, and I apologize if the print is small. Um, so, on to the presentation. Uh, thank you all for coming. Uh, my name is Nathan Bazzaio. Um, some of you might know me from working with the Vermont Center for Independent Living in the Burlington office. But one thing I am also doing in my, my, my spare time is I am a board member for the Northeast Disabled Athletic Association. And that is one of the many um, adaptive sports organizations in Vermont for people with disabilities. And so today what I'd like to do is talk to you a little bit about adaptive sports, um, how they came to be, how they became created, um, and the benefits for them. And so I am going to take you through a slideshow, um, show you a little bit about, uh, about adaptive sports, show you some of the adaptive sports offered, and hopefully if I have any time afterwards, uh, we will be able to, I'll be able to answer some questions. Um, so there's some pictures of some uh, cool activities people are participating in. Full disclosure, I borrowed some of these pictures of local people, so 
you might see people you know, and if you are any of the people in the pictures, don't sue me. I apologize for taking it without your permission. So. Educational purposes. Okay. Yeah, cool. So, um, adaptive sports and recreation. This right here is actually, if you look at a picture, this is a NDA sailboat where we have a person with a disability sailing. Um, and as you can see, he is able to sail using a sipping buff where he can steer the boat using his breath um, one of our programs. So not only am I a board member, but I am also a participant in disabled athletics. Um, these are three sports that I particularly like to participate in. Um, Tower soccer is one of the sports I play, which is basically soccer, where you've adapted your chair, put a guard on the front. Uh, I do adaptive sailing, and that's me sailing with my, uh, one of my coworkers, and adaptive kayaking. So we do adaptive kayaking program where people with physical disabilities are able to so kayak, really, just like everyone else. So and you really like ki kayaking? Yep, yep. And the one thing I should know is that these are not the only sports that I have tried. Um, and activities I've tried. I have tried several. Some of them I like, some of them I didn't like. Um, you know, um, so you might try some activities that you're not gonna like, but um, the good thing is that you tried and not to give up just because you found an activity you um, may not be too crazy about. So what is adaptive sports and recreation? Um, and I wanna put the recreation part in there because when I talk about adaptive sports, I'm not just talking about competitive sports where you're racing people and you're on a team and you're competing. I'm also talking about recreation, which is just getting out and doing activities, having fun, relaxing, um, just finding something where you're able to do an activity where you're enjoying yourself. So what is adaptive sports and recreation? Well, it's, according to the slide here, a phenomenon, really, in a movement where People with disabilities, whether it be physical, cognitive, intellectual, are being able to participate in sports that everybody else who, has, who does not have a disability can by adapting the equipment and modifying the rules. And when I really say it's a phenomenon and a movement, I mean it in the sense that it's really pretty recent. Uh, when you think about people with disabilities have been around since the age of God, Really, adaptive sports has really started, probably started off since World War II, but really didn't really pick it up until after the independent living movement in the 60s and 70s, and really not until the American with Disabilities Act. Um, so this right here is another picture of um, a sled hockey team in uh, Central Vermont called the um, Central Vermont Pioneers, uh, and they're able to play sled hockey and people with uh, mobility disabilities participate in that. So again, um, recovering the sport um, through um, adapting and universal design, which means being able to design a sport so everybody in all abilities can participate in, people with all kinds of abilities are able to participate in sporting events or recreational activities. And you see this example all the time, and what you're finding is, is that just because people have a disability doesn't mean they can excel if they work really hard in certain uh, sports and recreational activities. This picture in particular has a woman who is a uh, arm amputee, and she was actually a participant in the Olympics. Not, not the Paralympics, anything, but she participated in the Olympic Games. Um, so she was able to show that despite her disability, she can participate in physical sports and recreation just like everybody else. In other words, she can do almost anything that the others can do. What's that? She can do something like others can do. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Like TV too. Exactly. Um, so, just to give you a little history, I don't going to go through these point by point of adaptive sports, but again. Um, Really, if you look at the history, the big movement for recreation kind of started after the Civil War, where you had about 30,000 soldiers who um, had amputations. And so you had a big wave of people with disabilities coming through, and they were looking for certain treatments. Now, while Congress did pass a bill to provide recreational activities, that really did not start until much later. Um, 
So you see throughout the history of the games, there are all sort of so, um, a lot of events for people with physical disabilities. Um, the one thing I do want to highlight is in 1948, um, the, um, in London, um, which is really the birthplace of the Paralympics. And basically what happens is you've had some World War II veterans who were injured, saying they wanted to participate in activities and in sporting activities. And so I believe the first event for that was initially 12 or 16 people. Um, today the Paralympics has winter and summer Olympics and there's usually about um, 16 to 1800 participants. So again, it's really, really grown over the years um, for um, people with disabilities. Um, evidence. Uh, there is growing empirical evidence that participating in adaptive sports and recreation not only benefit people with disabilities physically in terms of making them stronger and their balance, but it also benefits people with disabilities emotionally. Uh, participating in, dis in activities helps people with disability gain self-confidence, um, helps their self-determination. And a lot of this, I've worked with a lot of people with disability who have done adaptive sports, who have basically gotten the feeling like, well, if I could do a disabled sport, if I can kayak, why can't I do other things? I could be able to apply for a job, or I might be able to go to school. Um, so there's a lot of evidence. Uh, when the evidence first came out, um, here we have a physical therapy did a study that basically looked at the physical benefits of adaptive sports. What they really also found is that emotionally, um, participating in adaptive sports really helps people gain confidence to do other things. It makes them feel better about themselves because you are doing things that everybody else can do. You are participating in the same activities that able-bodied and um, non-disabled people can do. When you come out of the war, you have to learn it all over again sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Well, why? So again, why does participating in adaptive sports do that? And this is just a list of some things that we have. I like to do that. It's about inclusion. Again, and that, this goes the whole meaning of the independent living movement. It's about inclusion, being included in what all people can do. Uh, many times during adaptive sports, people with disabilities um, can do and participate in activities their able-bodied and non-disabled friends can do. Um, I showed you kayaking. You can go out kayaking with friends. You can go sailing with friends. Or you can play sports and have people come watch you play sports. Not you just have to watch it. Um, it's about competition. Now, for some people, it's about competition. Some people like competing. Um, some people don't. But some people, it's like getting out there, competing, and trying your best. Um, just jumping down a well-being, physical fitness. It's about being physical, feeling for yourself. Even though you might not be able to move very much, or maybe you might not be able to do certain things through adaptations of adaptive sports and recreations, you can, you can achieve things, you can do things. You can try, um, your, you can try your best. I use, um, I'm gonna ask, so I'm, I'm gonna ask for some questions after the presentation, so if we could just wait, maybe we could participate. Right. Um, but thank you, you got a lot of, of enthusiasm. Um, so I know just from playing power soccer, even though we're driving motorized wheelchairs, the first time I did it, I was sweating. Um, but just the concentration of playing it and just keeping your balance. So there's physical, um, there's physical and mental benefits to it. Um, I do want to talk about the last, one to a second last thing. It's about inspiration. Now, I know inspiration is a word that we don't want very often within people with disabilities. I'm not talking about inspiring other people. You might inspire, I'm talking about inspiring yourself. So by participating in disabled athletics, you can inspire yourself and say, hey, I can do this. I can do better things. There's more I can do. So it's really about helping you gain confidence and gaining uh, the ability to do things. Um, now, these are some quotes, um, and I don't want to read them all, but I'll just read a few of them, from people who have participated in um, some disabled sports. And um, I have a couple of favorites. Uh, Adaptive sports helped me shape me into the person I am today. As a new wheelchair user, I was given the confidence to know that if I wanted to do it, it could somehow be done. Um, 
this second, this third call, I'm actually going to do a name drop. It's from a uh, teammate of mine, Zach Small. Some of you might know him from the Montpelier area. Uh, until power soccer came, soccer came along, I never knew what it was like to compete in competitive sports. I loved watching sports, but I would always be on the sideline and never part of the action. Now I am part of a team competing with other people who have shared the same experience as I have. I was just named the captain of the team, and my friends now come to watch me play. <clears throat> One thing that Zach did that um, I thought was very cool is when he was interviewing for his first job, they asked him to give an example of leadership and part of a team, and he, he talked about being part of power soccer. So he was able to use that to help him in the real world. Um, and then this last quote is my favorite quote. Um, it's a long one, but I think kind of sums up. Um, I fell in love with sled hockey the first time I, I, um, whoa, sorry. I donned pads, grabbed two sled sticks, and was pushed out onto the ice. And a lot of times people are reluctant and they literally have to be pushed out onto the ice um, because it's, it can be intimidating to try it. But, you know, as long as you want to try it, you might like it, you might love it, you might not like it. I fell a lot, but I was determined by the challenge. Since I started, my physical condition has significantly improved. My shyness has vanished. I have made lifelong friends with others in similar disabilities. I can't express how grateful I am to the people who got me started in the sport. Those who supported me, those who kept me involved, and those who work with me to make me the player and person I am today. I am not the person I was two years ago, and even if I had to stop playing tomorrow, the experience we had and excitement I've experienced knowing I am a true athlete will be with me for the rest of my life. To be an athlete can be a state of mind, to be able to compete and go over there. Um, so you don't have to excel at a sport. You don't have to be the best to be an athlete. You can compete with other people and so you can participate. Also, one thing I'll do is participating at, at disabled athletics. A lot of people meet people, other people with disabilities, who have common history, common experience, and might be able to share advice on what they've been through. Um, they're able to share these experiences with their friends who aren't disabled. So really the building of community and um, the growing in confidence. It's not about pity. And this is one thing that you hear a lot in the IL movement. Um, when people participating in, active, in, in, in um, disabled athletics, we really don't want to be part of a special story. What you want to do is you want to compete. You want to be about everybody else. You want to be doing the same things that non-disabled people are doing. And so it's not about pity. Um, has anybody seen the uh, movie Murderball? Anybody saw the movie Murderball about one rugby? Um, there's a quote in that that is, um, the goal is to be part of the sports page, not part of the living section. So the goal in terms of leveling the playing field amongst people with disabilities is so that adaptive sports is viewed on the same lines as regular sports. So people aren't going to be like, oh, look at this inspirational person participating in, in power soccer or can cycle. Um, the picture that you're seeing is actually an event my power soccer team holds every year at um, Patrick Gym at UVM. It's a power soccer competition. We play teams from New Hampshire, Massachusetts, Boston. And I can tell you that when we play it, we're not looking to inspire people. We're looking to beat the other team, we're looking to win. Um, so, so we're not looking to be nice. Um, it's about fun and getting out there and doing things. So it's not about that. Um, It's about equal treatment, not special treatment. So again, going back to the American with Disabilities Act, it was passed so that people with disabilities have equal access to certain activities. So really, when the act was first passed in 1991, um, it really didn't include a lot of modifications for things like gyms and pools and stuff. But then when it was revised, it did include a lot of adaptations. So nowadays, a lot of sport clubs, a lot of places that offer facilities to the general public have to make those available to people with disabilities. So what you're seeing is more pools with lifts, um, with lifts for people with disabilities to go swimming, uh, gym equipment available to people with physical disabilities. 
You now have activities like climbing walls, where people without physical disabilities or any disabilities can participate. Um, Vermont Adaptive Skiing and Sport. Uh, about 10 years ago, there might have been one, maybe two mountains of, um, offering adaptive downhill skiing. Nowadays, pretty much every downhill mountain has some kind of adaptive skiing program. A lot of this has to do with the ADA. Um, provide equal access for people with disabilities. So um, if you're thinking about participating in something, don't be shy, don't think you're asking for something special. You're asking for equal treatment. You're asking for equal access to activities. So now here's the part where I just show you a bunch of sports and how it's done. Um, a lot of sports are just taking the equipment and modifying it so that people with disabilities can participate in it. So this is a couple of Northeast Disabled Athletic things. This is a kayak that I showed in other pictures. You have outriggers on the sides uh, for people who have balance issues. And then you have um, the oars on a pivot so that people can use the oars uh, despite their strength. Uh, the kayak is just a regular kayak. It's just something that's been modified. Uh, people are, some people are transferred into it. Um, using a Hoyer lift. Um, and the great thing about that is that kayak can be changed to anybody's abilities, to be adjusted. Um, that corner is a sailboat. It's called a Martin 16. Uh, it's specifically made for people with physical disabilities to get in. Um, this particular picture shows it has a little joystick. If you look at the guy with his right hand, he's actually controlling it, much like I would my chair. And he has a sipping puck. Um, it's a two-person thing, so you always have a person sailing in the back. We've had many blind sailors participate with the person in the back um, giving directions, go left, go right, or starboard port if you want to get technical. So it's very easily adaptable. So, I'm sorry, I don't want to run into your ankles. Yeah. All right. So basically where there's a will, where there's people wanting, we can figure things out. We can figure out. We can adapt equipment. We can make different sports available to people with disabilities. And I am amazed that it seems like every month I hear somebody doing something different in that sport where I haven't heard it before. I'm like, wow, that's very original. So, you know, athletes that are born with disabling conditions or who acquire through accidents and conditions, we're too often left on the sidelines. We're too often left sitting on the sides watching and wanting to participate. But the technology is around and um, the ability is around for people with disabilities to be participants. And through assistive devices, uh, prosthetics for people with uh, lit amputees, um, this is a road bike that Adaptive Skiing Sport offers uh, for biking for people with disabilities. Um, assistive devices level the playing field. Uh, whether you want to be on the ice, maybe skating with somebody, doing down ski downhill skiing, participating in tennis. Uh, whether playing basketball. Um, lacrosse, that's actually a new sport I just learned about. They have wheelchair lacrosse. Um, or on the water. Sit skiing is a uh, program offered by the NBA where people can go water skiing. Um, on the rink or on the trail. Uh, we have sled hockey, and the A offers sled hockey in Chittenden County, or cross-country skiing. In the pool or on the track. So they have Paralympics where people can participate in athletics, and there's swimming programs all throughout Vermont. Um, uh, on the I, slopes. Can I ask you just one question? Wait, wait. Um, okay, okay, if we can wait until after the presentation, that would be great. Thank you. Um, so on the slopes or on the court, um, one of these pictures is of blind skiing that um, at Vermont Adaptive As offers and wheelchair tennis. Um, on the range, you have biathlon. On the path, the middle picture is important. It's just a uh, person in a wheelchair going down a bike path with their family. And that goes back to the recreation part. Maybe that for you is just going out and being active and just going for a walk or a stroll. Um, you know, new bike paths are being born to be out there. Um, 
climbing yeah. wall or participating in that. Um, on the reservoir, um, river kayaking. Um, here you have some more extreme sports, somebody in a wheelchair doing, uh, doing parkour or whatever it's called. Um, high in the mountains. Or if you got want to get really crazy, go jumping off a bridge, doing bungee jumping. That is not a sport I will participate in. The point is, is that sports are for everybody and that everybody should be able to participate in these sports. So just a really brief rundown. The NDAA is one of the organizations. We are a private nonprofit athletic organization. We mainly deal with people with physical disabilities. Um, we are entirely volunteer, and we um, offer sporting activities to about 450 people around the state with disabilities. Um, what we offer, well, winter sports, what we offer is um, sled hockey, Nordic sit skiing, biathlon, power soccer, wheelchair basketball. During the summer, we offer adaptive sailing, kayaking, canoeing, water skiing, and cycling, bocce ball, and uh, wheelchair tennis. Um, how to get involved, get some contact information. I, we have the slides handed out that if people want to access them, um, that is some slides for the NDA. Um, and some other organizations, Vermont Adaptive Skiing Sport, they're very active. They uh, do a lot of outdoor activities, skiing, biking, uh, water sports. Um, they're more seen in the central and southern Vermont. Um, Special Olympics of Vermont is another organization. Um, the Central Vermont Pioneers are a sled hockey team that are located in the Montpelier area. Um, and um, Stowe Adaptive Sports are another one. And I'm sure there are a lot more organizations that offer activities in Vermont, um, but these are just a few. Um, so that's what I have. I don't know what we're doing in terms of time. Um, anybody tell me what time it is? Yeah. 11.17. What time is it? 11.17. 11, what? 11.15. No, 11, 11.17. Oh, okay, so we do have some time. Uh, I've heard that. So questions, yeah. What's the difference between your organization and Adaptive Sports Vermont? That's a good question. What's the difference between the Northeast Disabled Athletic Association and Vermont Adaptive Skiing Sport? Because we do a lot of times get mistaken to be the same organization. Um, the NDAA, they're two separate organizations. Um, the Northeast Disabled Athletic Association, we mainly deal with um, people with physical disabilities. Uh, we're a volunteer organization, so we don't have a lot of people who specialize in behavioral or cognitive disabilities. That's not to say we don't offer athletic activities to people with developmental or cognitive disabilities, but we, um, but there are just certain things that we might not be able to provide. We do team sports, so we do a lot of, we do power soccer, we do sled hockey, uh, we do adaptive sailing, so we do a lot of competition. Uh, our rules are that people playing this sport need to be able to understand the rules and concepts of those. Um, and we do a lot of one-on-one -on -one work with people. So maybe somebody wants to learn to sail, we take that person out sailing. Uh, we will help them learn how to sail or they want to learn how to kayak. We will take that person out sailing. 
adaptive skiing sport really specializes a lot more in outdoor activities. I work a lot more with developmental people with developmental disabilities. Uh, we're skiing, they do do a lot of biking and things like that. They also do a lot of group outings with like schools and organizations versus individuals. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining us on this informative edition of Able Then On Air highlights from the State House's Vermont Disability Day 2019. We would like to thank our sponsors. Arlene is off today. I'm Lauren Seiler. See you next time on the next informative edition of Able Then On Air. See you next time. Ableton On Air is sponsored in part by Green Mountain Support Services, empowering neighbors with disabilities to be at home in the community. Additional support for Ableton On Air is sponsored in part by Washington County Mental Health Services, where hope and support come together.